You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. Let me just start with this, um, a reaction. I Was this a, in any way a surprise, the news of uh, Colin Hurley's commitment? Behind closed doors, it wasn't a surprise. Obviously, he wanted the public to be a bit surprised by it, but uh, this is something he and his camp had been working on in terms of a reclassification from 25 into 24 uh, for a little bit now, and uh, he's been high on LSU. Look, he's been to campus five or six times since, uh, the new regime got into town, so it was very clear he was serious about LSU. He had camped at LSU this summer, went and camped at a bunch of schools, Ohio State, Bama, Georgia. I mean, everybody had offered him, so uh, this was pretty big that LSU was able to get it to the finish line and, and quickly kind of work to both get him committed and announce the news that he was reclassifying. All right, so, Shay, let's let's take this a, a little bit step-by-step step here because uh, Julian Sayan uh, is a guy that LSU was in on, and he he committed to Bama earlier this week. So, was was this a product of LSU not getting that commitment and being okay taking Hurley's? I don't think it was. I don't think they were connected. I think LSU was in a spot where if Julian Sayan wanted to come, they were about to either have two commitments or have to make some tough decisions. So, um, this one kind of worked out. I, I guess in a way to where. Uh, no matter what, LSU came out with at least one quarterback commitment. I think they feel good about him. So, yeah, the timing, I guess, uh, is more than – it's not coincidental in the sense that this was something that was kind of already brewing behind the scenes. And um, him going public with it this week was uh, kind of always a possibility. I will, I'll say that. Okay. Um, we'll talk about Hurley specifically in just a quick second, but can you walk us through the reclassification and explain – because I've had a lot of people like message me on social media today, say like, "What does what does that all mean?" So, if you could just maybe explain it and walk us through the process of how this came to be. Uh, yes, so it really just depends on how much you can load up on school. He's a kid who's got a four point oh GPA right now, so I think he's just going to continue to add courses. And um, much like kids enroll early, right, where you missed your spring semester of high school and you go ahead and enroll in college. Um, we've seen a not like Desmond Ricks did it already this season where uh, you just reclassify a year. And, and with Hurley only being a sophomore, you're that far out to where you can plan to say, hey, look, I can add these classes in this order. And, you know, what they had to go through, you have to go through compliance and all these different things to make sure that, hey, look, what all do y'all require? Can we, if we took it in this year and next year, you know, would it be good to go? And, and the answer was yes. So at the most fundamental level, what it is is, I don't know what you, you could call it skipping a grade. You could call it, I don't, I don't know what it's easiest for people to think about it in their minds of him doing, but he's gone now from a sophomore on the field to part of the junior crop of guys that are out on the field. So he, he won't sign in 2023. He's a class of 2024 guy. So basically he did what Quinn Ewers did. So when he's playing his freshman year at LSU, that should be his senior year in high school. Shay, is there any concern just physically about a guy being ready a year early? I mean, there obviously could be some, some concern about that, but I don't think that's the case with Hurley, a kid who's already, you know, 215 as a, a sophomore. And if you see pictures of him, you can see he spends a lot of time in the gym and um, good compact build. Uh, I think that there's probably no worry on that end. That he, Look, he still has another, what, almost a year of this, you know, kind of a year and a half, I'll say, more before he would actually be done with high school and enrolling into college. I don't actually don't know if he'd be an early enrollee or not. So, we could be two more years of you know high school development before he's on a college campus. But he's also, it's not like this often happens where kids reclassify back into the grade like they actually should be in, right? Like they got at some point, you know, were held back for whatever reason, and then they jump back into the grade they should be in. He's in the grade he should be in. He's actually a young kid. He's 15, still a sophomore uh, with a spring birthday. So he's legitimately skipping a grade here. And uh, I think all, all sides kind of feel good about, you know, that being a possibility, something that will work out for them. Uh, Shay Dixon is with us from On3 Sports. Um, Shay, let's talk a little bit about um, about Colin Hurley, the the player. I mean, what what does the scouting report sort of look like on him? Big arm, uh, or I should say a powerful one. I mean, he can make all the throws. Um, there were multiple people that were at LSU summer camp that saw 
uh, Hurley throw and probably about, you know, five to 10 of the other top quarterbacks among the next couple of classes of the underclassmen uh, and felt like he had the, the strongest arm of the group. So he definitely got a big arm. He plays at Trinity Christian Academy, which would have been Kevin Tolliver's school in Florida. So they traditionally have pretty good football. Uh, they're undefeated right now. They're back-to-back state champions. He was obviously the quarterback last year as a ninth grader. Uh, so this is his second year now playing high school, and they're undefeated again. So could be looking at back-to-back state titles there. But I would say he's a pocket passer. This isn't a guy who's just scrambling around and running downfield or labeled as a dual threat. I mean, this is a guy who's going to sit in the pocket and try to make all the throws from there. And um, I think development-wise, he's already kind of put a ton of time into working not only just with the staff there at Trinity, but with trainers and quarterback developers, and he's about as active as it gets on the seven-on-seven scene and traveling around with those Florida teams. So he's kind of put himself both on Friday nights and in other settings, camp settings, combine settings, uh, in the mix with a lot of older guys and, and has often kind of matched what they were able to do. So there's look, it's so early for rankings, Matt. I mean, these kids are sophomores in high school. I guess technically now he's a junior that he reclassified, but a lot of Walker Howard didn't even start a game until his junior year. So I, I think in terms of just quarterback thoughts of, Hey, where does this kid stack up versus the rest? I think you just kind of take a look at that about a year from now and say, all right, here's the whole crop. They're all about six months away from college. And uh, then you get a really feel for, Hey, look, is this a top three quarterback, top five, you know, kind of where does he rank? Uh, but there is no doubt that with that offer list, a lot of schools would have been ready to take it. This is a big win for LSU. Shay, can you elaborate a little bit there? Um, because obviously one of the big questions with the new staff was how would they recruit? So I think they're emphatically answering that right now with 2023 and getting a good head start on 2024. But specifically with Hurley, uh, who handled the recruitment? And, and what, did what if anything, did we learn about this staff's uh, recruitment with Colin Hurley? You know, I think it's, yeah, you make sort of an, an emphatic statement whenever you land a quarterback, right? I mean, that's like big news. It's arguably the most important position on the field. So then you see that and say, oh, look, I've seen a lot of reactions today. Oh, Brian, they said Brian Kelly couldn't recruit. They say the staff couldn't attract big name players. They squashed that, as you kind of noted already. Their 2023 class is top four in the country right now. And with Ohio State and, you know, the Bamas and Georgia, the world, the team's that have been on very level footing without any coaching changes. So the fact that they've already put themselves in that mix and are doing it by going around the country and getting guys that are being recruited by all these other schools uh, has been really, really impressive. Now with Hurley, Joe Sloan as a quarterback's coach, obviously puts in a lot of work here. Denbrock met with him a bunch when he was on campus, the offensive coordinator, Brian Kelly, they talked about playing a, a really big role in terms of sitting down with Colin early and, kind of talking over how he would fit in and why they want to prioritize him. Um, and then you've got guys, you know, guys and, and women, men and women that are working in the personnel department that uh, obviously chip in. We hear J.R. Belton's name all the time, Jordan Arsenault. So uh, I would say this staff does a very good job, like most, of, of making it a complete staff effort to where it's not just one coach who's doing all the heavy lifting, but uh, one coach is the point man, and then everybody else kind of helps out when they can. He's on Twitter at Shay Dixon on three sports. Uh, LSU lands Colin Hurley, a quarterback who's going to reclassify for the class of 2024. Uh, Shay, what is this uh, when we look ahead 2024? I mean, they're obviously still pushing for 23. Or should we expect this type of pace for the 2024 class already? I mean, like, is that how many commitments for, I'm looking at right now? But they're already they've already got a good head start on 2024. This might be six commits um, yeah, or seven. I'm, re- I'm refreshing. That range. <laughs> I'm refreshing right now. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. Six commits. So that's a nice start. Um, you know, you look around the country and some schools who do get out to a, a quick head start will have about five, six. Some have more. But um, obviously you want to balance just some diligence of waiting to see how all these guys look with a little bit of aggressiveness in the sense of, hey, look, if you see a guy that you like, much like a Colin Hurley, much like all the other guys that have got committed, then you've made the offer, you're pressing, and you like to get them committed. So um, I won't be surprised if that's the last 2024 commitment they get even this week. I bet they pop at least one person this weekend, and I just think it's just such a big game. They've offered new guys. They're coming in uh, around the state. You know, More guys are coming in for visits. So I don't think that they're about to run off 20 high school, you know, 20 
kids that are juniors in high school now, but I think that by the time the season ends, I won't be surprised if they're into double digits, which is about a normal pace. That's about kind of where you want to be. Jay, can you give us a sense of what game day is like for LSU Bama for, from a recruiting perspective? Ooh, man, this is a this is big. I mean, you've got really everybody, almost a lot of the who's who, and you got all your commits coming in, but uh, or I should say a majority of the commits are coming in. Um, but when you look at the board the rest of the way, Matt, it's I think fans that I pulled them, I'd say, who would you love to land? People say, oh, Desmond Ricks or JV and Tobiano, you know, some big time corner, or defensive back that, you know, you could come in and maybe rely on playing right away. Both those guys are uncommitted. Both of them will be here this weekend. And uh, you kind of go up and down the wish list of uh, where can you close? Another kid, I'll tell you, he doesn't have an offer yet. Won't be surprised if he has one this weekend. Uh, out of Santa Mon is Dylan Carpenter, a defensive lineman who's committed to Louisiana Lafayette, but it's sort of put on a huge senior year where uh won't be shocked if LSU makes an in-state offer there and gets them. So I think it's, gosh, from the guys you know, like, you know, Rick's and them and Tobiano to guys who are emerging as seniors and, and could come into play in this 2023 class like Carpenter, everyone's there this weekend. And they only have one official visitor, Ryan Yates, who's already committed uh, out of Texas. So, it's not like they're having to host, you know, 10 guys and their families all weekend long while balancing the Bama game. Um, you know, keep it to a small list. You got one family coming in. He's already committed. Uh, and then that really just puts kind of Saturday as the big day where everybody gets into town. Everybody gets and hangs out on the field before the game and afterwards. And then you have a lot of them on Sunday kind of come back up to the football ops building and meet with the staff and, and kind of get a little bit more downtime that maybe you wouldn't have gotten when the staff is kind of in full-on, obviously, full-on preparation mode for Bama the day of the game. He is Shea Dixon. He's on Twitter at Shea Dixon on three sports. Of course, the Bengal Tiger. Shea, we appreciate it, man. Have a great weekend. You don't yell at me like we do on TV, Matt. I've noticed that on I the didn't radio. Yell. You're very calm with me. I didn't yell at you. It's all no, about no, the just topics. Near me. You're, you're just, you just, that's, listen, man, that's just crossfire. You just happen to be standing next to me when Cobble tees me up on something, all right? That has nothing to do with you. That's just proximity. That's like the laptop in front of me right now. I'm not yelling at it. It's just the thing in front of me whenever I start ranting. That's the Moscone I love, and that's all I wanted before I got off the phone. You got just a little bit of life. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Shay. Bye, guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.